because right now I feel super weak and I feel broken. As a foster parent, have you ever felt like you are in the trenches? If you ever have felt that way, I hope that this video is encouraging for you. Hey guys, my name is Lisa Hoppy, and my husband Peter and I are foster parents. Uh, I make weekly videos about foster care. Definitely subscribe if you are not already. Uh, now I say make weekly videos, but I think it's been about five weeks now <laughs> and since I had a video uploaded. And uh, I want to kind of talk through the reason why and um, just uh, some stuff that we're going through without sharing too much detail. Um, but to be encouraging to you when you are going through hard things as a foster parent. Um, so the last video I posted was um, a beautiful song uh, that my husband had written for me with Songfinch called God Will Redeem. And that video was super emotional, and I remember I had said at the end of that, hopefully the next one won't be super emotional, because I wasn't planning for it to be. Um, and this one probably more emotional for me <laughs> than hopefully you watching, but I want to try to focus on um, the encouragement. But it is going to be some heavy, heavy stuff today. In March, um, we have our 17-year-old um, July with us, and then we had um, three kids for the whole month of March for respite. Um, two three-year-old girls and a nine-year-old boy and um, they were just a whole bunch of energy and it just it made the days a little bit long I had to wake up pretty early for them um, to take them to daycare and then um, thankfully they, they had um, daycare set up so that was great and it wasn't too far um, for for me to drive it was about um, 25 minutes um, one way for me to drive there they had come for one week in February and then um, they came back like a week later for the whole month of March. So we already kind of got into a little routine that one week they were here. And then so going into March, I was like, all right, you know, we're good. And I really thought I'd be able to keep the videos cranking. Um, but then, <laughs> then something happened um, that I was not expecting. Um, so I'm not sure if you remember, but back in November, I talked about... Um, when we had um, disrupted some, um, two different placements. Um, the second one I had talked about was um, a girl that we had for two months, um, another 17 year old, and I never named her. And so I think I'm gonna name her for this one just so it's not confusing as I'm telling the story. Um, we'll name her August because she came to us at the very end of August. I got a message that she needed um, a, a place because she was having to leave her previous foster home. And so it was one of those things where I knew long term, you know, we really couldn't do it. But they were really just asking for two weeks um, while they transitioned and found um, another long term placement for her. So um, at first I was like, no, like it didn't end well last time. Like I don't want um, the relationship that we have with July to be affected because July and August would have to share a room together because we had the other um, room and space taken um, up with the three that we had for the month. And so I was just like, I don't know, like just like trying to think like, how will this work? And um, I didn't respond right away because it was a voicemail that I got. So I didn't respond right away um, until the next day. and. I was reading in scripture um, and uh, it was right around Easter and so I was reading through just the life of Jesus and um, you know the sacrifice that he has made for us on the cross and I was like wow like how amazing is that and you know we have been forgiven and we have been like just loved lavishly by Jesus and so I was like okay if Jesus can do this for me, then, you know, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I can do this for two weeks. And through that time, I would use my network of people um, and just also um, going on to um, different uh, Facebook groups for the area to see if anyone had space for her long term. Because DCS said they were going to continue looking, and I, I don't doubt that they did. Um, they just weren't finding anything. So... Um, at one point she went to respite. They thought that could be a possibility, but then just realized it wasn't a good fit for her. One, because she would have to be in a loft. Um, they didn't have an extra bedroom. And it's like, well, could DCS make an exception? Yeah, possibly, but like, 
that foster parent already did have a lot in her hand with um, some medical issues of other children in her care. So that would be a lot. So it was, I was like, okay, a plan B. And I remember I was like, just like so discouraged. And so was August. I mean, she was like, where am I going next? Like it was, it was difficult those couple of weeks because yeah, we're just like a bandaid. So the first week was okay. The second week it's like, well, what is going to happen? So, um, it was supposed to be that Friday and that was that Monday that was super like just discouraging. And, um, someone else that had reached out on Facebook, I messaged them, talked with them and, um, Tuesday, um, uh, they met and by Thursday, um, August was able to, um, be transitioned to their home. And I did ask DCS, I was like, so did you guys have anything else? And they were like, no. So I'm glad that I took the initiative to reach out, but I'm telling you what, it was also super stressful and like, it was just, it was difficult, right? So there was already that. Um, and as you can imagine, like having someone back in your care that you have disrupted, I, I don't know, but I, I think it made um, July, who has been in our home since October, just kind of feel uncertain um, about us. And this is me just kind of trying to figure out 17 year olds' big emotions, right? So then um, at the end of uh, March, um, the other three kids um, went back to their foster home and it was just um, July and us again. And um, it was, you know, over her spring break and it was time to take her to some college visits just to, as she prepares for that next step. And I think um, that step is, you know, very overwhelming for any, any youth. And then you just add on top of that um, trauma and uncertainty. And uh, the last week has been probably um, the top 10 toughest weeks for us as foster parents. And I share all this with you because I had someone reach out to me um, uh, that had watched our videos and she said, hey, like you haven't posted videos in quite a while. I just wanted to check with you and see how you're doing. And it couldn't have come at a more perfect time. And I was like, yeah, I want to get a video out this week, um, but I, I just don't know like what to say. I don't know how to encourage. So because right now I feel super weak and I feel broken and I'm wondering, does this make a difference in this youth's life? Is this time wasted? And I think of that song that my husband created, nothing here is wasted and God will redeem. And you can say these things to yourself, but in the moment it's like, how can I do this? And I don't know what to say. And um, she encouraged me. She said, say that. <laughs> At foster care, sometimes you're going to be in the trenches. I don't see past this. I don't see how we're going to get through this. How are we going to have breakthrough? Um, and I am just sharing our journey. Um, and this is part of it right now, is being in the trenches. Um, on the front lines, so thankful, so thankful for a team of people. You know, you have a therapist, you have life skills workers, you have independent living workers, you have case workers, you have the guardian ad litem or maybe the CASA. All those people are set up in place to help and those are awesome resources. However, they're seeing that child once a week, once a month, once a quarter. And you as a foster parent are seeing this child day in and day out and you are taking the brunt of the fear, the anxiety, the behaviors, the unknowns, the anger. And um, my husband and I are just working on how can we continue to respond with grace and truth. And I tell you what, um, I could not do this without um, the Holy Spirit in me. And maybe that's not what you want to hear. Um, if you are in the trenches as a foster parent and you don't have a foundation of faith, um, I'm just letting you know how we have um, gotten through it. Um, because 
Um, I know that it's just a spiritual battle. Um, and I know that there's generational trauma and there are things happening that are unseen that I cannot see that I do not know from this past of this child in our care or his youth in our care. And so how can we um, continue just to lean in, continue to pray? Um, and it's just through the work of the Holy Spirit in us. How can we remain calm when um, the, the atmosphere in your home is not calm? And uh, I was reading and I want to share with you because this has encouraged my heart so much. Um, 2 Corinthians 12, um, and it talks about um, there was a, a thorn, is, and we don't know what the thorn was, but a thorn in, um, in Paul. And he said, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecution, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You have, as a foster parent, a lot of hardships. You have a lot of insults coming your way. You may feel very, very weak wondering, is this ever going to change? How will this change? Lord, I don't see it. Lord, I cannot make it through the end of this month. I cannot wait, make it through the end of this week. I cannot make it through the end of this day. Sometimes even the hour. But just make it through that minute, that moment and lean into the strength of the Lord. He will bring you peace and comfort, and God sees you, and he cares. He cares deeply about these children. Yeah, you might care for the children in your care, but the Lord cares for them so much more than we ever can. And I know, I know, I am talking right now to people who may not have a foundation in Christ, and, um, I understand that and I, I'm just sharing our personal experience and, and what has helped me get through the moments when there is just absolute chaos in the house and how can we have peace um, in the midst of that and um, it is only through Christ in me that we can continue to pour out um, in the midst of hardships, in the midst of insults. But I hope what you take from this um, is that the work you are doing is important it is worth it. I know it's tough. Um, God sees you. God cares. God sees the children in your care. He cares. Um, and lean on him. Lean on supports in your community and lean on the team um, of that foster youth um, to be able to um, help them hopefully get through the other side. Um, and and even, if, even if they never do, um, may you be encouraged that it is worth it, that nothing is wasted, and that uh, you have the strength to continue. This is as much as a message to myself as it is to you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you are not already, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. No, nothing here is wasted. God will redeem.